This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. The European Union officially announced new tariffs on imported Chinese-made EVs. It's imposing additional individual duties of 17.4% on BYD, 20% on Geely, and 38.1% on SAIC. All other companies that import EVs from China and cooperated in the EU's investigation into unfair subsidies, but had not been sampled yet, will be hit with an additional 21% tariff, and those that didn't cooperate have been slapped with a 38.1% tariff. And this is all on top of the existing 10% import tariff. Even Western automakers like BMW and Tesla that import EVs into Europe from China are being hit with the additional tariff. They fell under the cooperated but not sampled yet category, so they'll face the 21% tariff. However, any company can request a review with the European Commission, which could get their tariffs cut to a lower rate. This all stems from an investigation into Chinese-made EVs launched last year in the EU that claims they benefit too much from production, shipping, and sales subsidies in both China and Europe. The new tariffs kick in on July 4th, but technically, the official investigation won't end until November 2nd. If it still comes to the same conclusion that Chinese EVs are benefiting too much from subsidies, then the tariff will lock in and they typically stay in place for a five-year period. China called the move protectionist, but claimed that it will have little impact. However, collectively, it will cost automakers billions of dollars. And China has already threatened new tariffs on certain goods coming from the EU, including cars with two and a half liter engines and bigger. As we pointed out before, this will have an outsized impact on German automakers, not only because they export a number of cars to China, but also because a large number of their sales and profits come from the country. GM is slashing its EV production forecast for this year, and we still don't see how it's going to meet its new target. Previously, GM said it would build 200 to 300,000 Altium-based EVs in North America this year, but now it's cutting that to 200 to 250,000 because of a slowdown in EV demand. It has models on sale from Chevrolet, GMC, Cadillac, and Brightdrop, but they only sold just under 9,400 examples combined in the first quarter. GM claims it sold 9,500 EVs in May alone, and it has more models like the Equinox EV hitting the market. So it will be ramping up production and sales. But right now it's on track to build less than 100,000 EVs in North America this year. So that ramp up is going to have to be awfully steep for GM to hit its target. The company is also making a big investment in its autonomous unit, Cruise. GM is pouring $850 million into the AV company, which will fund its operations through the rest of the year. Cruise currently operates with manual and supervised testing in three U.S. states, but it came under heavy criticism after one of its vehicles dragged a pedestrian that had been struck by another vehicle and a subsequent investigation that found poor leadership at the top of the company, which led to some pretty high-profile departures, including the founder. GM says the $850 million will help Cruise get some momentum back. Car sales in China slightly dipped last month. According to the China Passenger Car Association, automakers sold 1.7 million passenger vehicles in May, which is down about 2% compared to a year ago. But it was actually an increase of 11% compared to April, and through the first five months of the year, retail passenger sales totaled more than 8 million units, which is a gain of 5.7% over last year. Not surprisingly, new energy vehicles, which includes BEVs and PHEVs, accounted for most of the growth. Automakers sold 804,000 NEVs in May, which is a 38% gain compared to a year ago, and a nearly 19% increase month over month. NEVs now account for 47% of the total passenger car market in China.
used EV prices in the U.S. are crashing and they've dropped below used gas car prices for the first time. According to a study from IC Cars, the average used EV was $265 cheaper than the average used gas car in February. And that gap widened to $2,657 in May. Last month, the average used EV sold for $28,767 compared to nearly $41,000 a year ago, which is a drop of 30%. Meanwhile, the average used gas car in May cost $31,424, which is only 6% below a year ago. And the drop in used EV prices is likely to continue. IC Car says that prices haven't bottomed out yet, and it sees no indication of value stabilizing. Last year, the National Transportation Safety Board recommended that all new vehicles in the U.S. be equipped with ISA, or Intelligent Speed Assist Technology, which can prevent vehicles from driving over the speed limit. And surprisingly, a new survey from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety found that most drivers are on board with requiring it. More than 60% of drivers would find it acceptable if their car provided audio or visual warnings when they exceeded the speed limit. And nearly 50% would be okay if the system automatically restricted speeds or made it harder to press the gas pedal. But the survey also found that around half of drivers would disable the feature if they could. The U.S. Treasury Department announced that American car buyers have claimed more than a billion dollars in EV tax incentives since the beginning of the year. More than 150,000 total payments have been issued. The subsidies are part of the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act, which provide up to $7,500 for the purchase of a new EV or up to $4,000 for a used EV. We know there's a bunch of hydrogen and fuel cell skeptics out there, but the technology keeps making progress. Renault's hydrogen joint venture called Hyvea announced a partnership with Hype, a company that provides zero emission mobility, including hydrogen powered taxis. They're planning to deploy two new refueling stations and a fleet of fuel cell master vans in France. And then Daimler Truck and Kawasaki Heavy Industries signed a deal to jointly develop a supply for liquid hydrogen. While most fuel cells fill up with hydrogen in its gas form, Daimler is working on liquid hydrogen for long-haul applications because it's much more energy dense, so you could get more range from the same size gas tank. However, liquid hydrogen has to be stored at cryogenic temperatures, so you have to have a very robust and tightly sealed system. Otherwise, the hydrogen can start to boil off and escape the tank, which would be like pouring gas and money down the drain. But this is not the only powertrain tech it's developing. Daimler envisions that BEV trucks will handle shorter distances. But that's a wrap for today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. MEDC, where Michigan businesses are powering the future of mobility. Tajan Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. And by ZF. Michigan is leading the charge in mobility and innovation, and I can't think of a better state to be in. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, lighten up. But with world-class composite material, Tajin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. 
In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi for compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software defined vehicles. When the elements are working against you, being confident in your grip on the road is what really matters. Bridgestone Alenza tires, improved acceleration in wet conditions.